Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Today we welcome a special guest who's the lead developer over at Ravencoin. So uh, Tron Black, he goes by on social media. So thanks for coming on. Hi. So thanks. So much to talk about today. Ravencoin's been doing some great things, and there's a lot of overlap between the sort of decentralized world, but you're actually sort of tinkering in the world of STOs. So for those that haven't followed Ravencoin, how would you describe it to them? Uh, so I would, I would describe it uh, initially as a as a, a code fork of Bitcoin, uh, and that ran for about eleven months, uh, and then had what was originally planned, which is the ability to create your own asset on top of it. So uh, if you're familiar with open assets or counterparty or one of those technologies kind of puts assets on top of Bitcoin, it's that, but merged together so that we can kind of make the experience better. So uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess my first question is the STO world is highly regulated and there's all these rules around compliance and jurisdictions and you guys have gone for that decentralized model and a proof of work blockchain. So how's, what's that been yeah. like and how did you make that all work? Yeah, so uh, the idea was originally from Bruce Fenton. He was the former executive director of, of the Bitcoin Foundation. And uh, one of his ideas was to, to do this project um, and to you know make sure we did uh, we stayed legally clear, meaning there was no pre-mine, no, you know, we didn't sell funds to anybody, anything like that. Yeah. Um, and then we created the, the, the asset layer. Uh, and then after we created the asset layer, and so this was kind of through 2018. So 2018 uh, was, uh, well, really 2017 was when we started. And 2017 was kind of the year of the ICOs. Uh, and then in 2018, they're kind of like, hey, you guys can't in the US, you know, the SEC said you guys can't can't do this. And so a lot of the token capabilities of Ravencoin were uh, the ability to kind of uh, work like or replace or, or be uh, work like the ERC20 uh, token, but with some additional features that kind of made it better. Yeah. Uh, once the regulators said, oh, yeah, this is um, problematic to have it when it's on chain to be able to just kind of send it to anybody until it's been either a year issued or things like that. So we, we said, all right, uh, how do we solve this? And so that's the next thing. It's on testnet now uh, and it's restricted assets and tags. And so if you think about the existing assets, which we've had since uh, November of last year, uh, the difference is if it starts with a dollar sign right on the front of the tag. So all, all of our, uh, all of our assets, have a unique name. So unlike in ERC-20 where it's a unique contract ID, but anybody can have the same name, yeah. uh, on Ravencoin it has to have a unique name. Well, if that unique name starts with a dollar sign, then it's a restricted asset. And what that means is you can set up a rule set for that asset. Uh, fairly simple. We're not trying to do everything that that uh, that Ethereum can do, but we're trying to cover the 80 or 90% that everybody's doing, yeah. which is uh, we need to make sure that it can be, uh, you know, kind of handle SEC ish rules. Um, you know, there's other, there's other jurisdictions that have similar rules. Uh, but you can say, all right, this token that I just created can only live in addresses that have this tag. Yeah. And then you can, in that's in our same system, you can, you can become a tag issuer and you can say, okay, I'm tagging with KYC. And so I store the KYC information that never goes on chain, of course, uh, or I tag it with accredited and I store the accreditation, the fact that I made sure they were you know, wealthy or whatever the, you know, the rules are. Yeah. Uh, and then you can say this, this token can only live in an address that is both KYC, you know, has a KYC tag and an accredited tag. Yeah. And so it'll we'll only move there. There's a couple of other things. Uh, another one is the ability to freeze it in place. Uh, and that's uh, a kind of another requirement that's come out that's like, hey, if we come to you with a, you know, with a legal letter that says, hey, this may be used in for nefarious purposes, they need to be able to just like lock it down. Yeah. Um, so that's another kind of feature that we've added. Uh, those features don't affect at all the existing tokens. You know, they're just like ERC-20 tokens. You can create them. You come in, cost you 500 Raven, you can create a token, you can create as many as you want. You can say whether it's reissuable or you can create more. All of those things exist. Uh, and are not changed. It's only the ones that start with the dollar sign. You say, okay, this is restricted. It's trying to be compliant. Um, so that's what we're working on. It's on It's on testnet now. So if I'm an investor and I want to buy an asset off you, how do I get KYC if I am an accredited investor? Um, that's the part we'll be working on as soon as we have this tagging capability. Uh, so we are uh, invested in uh, identity mind. There's some other people that we can talk to and we're hoping 
uh, we can, uh, we kind of want it to be at least from Ravencoin's perspective. We hope that there's multiple partners yeah. that just say, "Hey, you know, our our job as Identity Mind or our job as Yachty or or our job as is to just KYC somebody and then tag them." Yeah. Uh, from the regulators' perspective, I hope that they'll look at it and say, "Oh, someone's tagged him. We know who, who the only people that can issue this tag is this entity." So if we need to audit it, we can say, hey, they issued, you know, 100,000 tags. We want to see 100,000 accredited records or whatever. Um, and so that hopefully everybody's happy. The math is making sure you can't create tags without having the key. Yeah. The, the auditors are happy. The, the token issuers, I hope, will be really happy because then they have like this market where it's like they've already been KYC. They've already been accredited and not having to do it again. So that's kind of our hope is is that we can build this ecosystem uh, that's compliant and that makes the token happy, you know, makes everybody happy. So. so, what sort of assets have you guys seen to date that people have been issuing? So, a lot of the assets that we've have over twenty thousand assets created, you know, and they cost anywhere from you know twenty, thirty, forty dollars to kind of depending on what what the price of Raven was at the time. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them are kind of cyber squatting on the names because, like a domain name, uh, these are. Uh, you can only create one of a particular name. So I think there's a lot of those. Uh, but there's some other real projects that are, uh, you know, creating on, you know, there's there's ones that are doing uh, cert, uh, gun certs, uh, so certifications for guns. There's other ones that are doing real estate. There's other ones that, that want to do art. Uh, so there's a lot of different people that are kind of tokenizing various different things. Uh, and and we, we try to post those on raven.wiki. Yeah. So if you want to look at like the, the actual projects, there's they, no one has to ask us, right, whether they're going to do anything. So yeah. if somebody's out there that's already grabbed an asset and starts doing stuff, we won't know it unless we see transactions or something that kind of indicates there's activity. And, and then we try to probably figure out what they're doing. But we have a list of the ones we know are like real, real projects. So what's the conversation for someone that's considering, you know, issuing a security and they're thinking about going to one of the more centralized models versus uh, Ravencoin? Yeah. Like, what are you trying to tell them? Yeah, so, so the rules uh, vary by jurisdiction. So I'm, I'm pretty familiar with the rules in the U.S., uh, which is you have, to, uh, you have to either register the security or you have to operate under an exemption. Yeah. An exemption is sort of like you still have to file something, kind of piece of paper that says we're operating under this. Uh, the most common one in the U.S. or two most common ones are Reg D and Reg S. Yeah. Uh, Reg D says I can sell to accredited investors only. Uh, which means accredited means you have a certain net worth or a certain expectation of making a certain amount, uh, a little bit more if you're married. Uh, and so somebody kind of checks that, checks that you're making that much or that you have, you know, have a bunch of assets, yeah. uh, not including your primary residence. So that was a rule that was changed a little while back. Uh, so that's in the U.S. Uh, outside the U.S. is kind of covered by Reg S. So Reg S, it's sort of the SEC, I think, going, hey, not our problem. These people are not our citizens, uh, uh, but uh, they also have to be uh, non-citizens and also not on U.S. soil. So the SEC kind of takes, hey, people are standing on U.S. soil and people are outside, you know, are citizens of other countries yeah. and you can sell to them. Uh, but you also have to be careful to make sure you're not advertising in the U.S. because that causes some issues. Yeah. Uh, and then there's some other exemptions that were started under the Jobs Act, uh, which was in, I think, 2012 and then kind of in my view, slow walked. Mm. It kind of took them three years. I don't know why it takes that long. <laughs> anyway, uh, they get they get to the uh, to the end, and they have some uh, tier one, tier two, and they have different rules. Um, so you can raise up to twenty million under one of them, and fifty million on another. Uh, you still have to get approval, and so there's some stuff stuck in approvals uh, that people are trying to operate under this exemption, and it kind of gets stuck. Uh, hopefully, those those get sorted out, or they do a Jobs Act 2019, and they fix some of the stuff and make them make them better because they're not they're not great um but uh hopefully they i mean there's a bunch of stuff trying to uh, token taxonomy act is another one that will kind of help solve some of these problems and say hey which ones are really utility tokens and which ones are are actually securities uh so hopefully they can fix some of these things yeah fantastic so one of the things that people have been talking about a lot is uh the problem of oracles and getting information from the real world onto the blockchain and certified in your case as well. So I've had a bit of a play around with the Raven platform and you're sort of um, uploading documents and do you want to walk us through that process of certification? Yeah, so so, uh, so the tags, I think, uh, operate potentially a little bit like oracles. Oracles are um, either automated or non-automated. It's basically signing something into the blockchain. One thing people uh, do that, that uh, just hear smart contracts 
they tend to be like, we'll just make a smart contract that just reaches out and checks an API and says, hey, you know, is this, you know, what's the score of the game? And then we'll, and then we'll decide, you know, who to pay and things like that. It doesn't work that way yeah. because every node has to get exactly the same data. Mm. So somebody basically needs somebody, meaning somebody or a computer needs to sign something, check the score, sign it, send it in. Of course, you're trusting that entity at that point. Uh, so it might be better to get three people that check the scores of the game and then put it in and check all three, make sure they all match, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so that's our oracles, and they're more common in smart contracts. So you're basically, it's one of the ways that you get data into smart contracts. Uh, you could think of our tags a little bit like uh, like an oracle in a way that you have a uh, someone who, we're calling qualifiers. So a qualifier is someone who can issue tags. Okay. And so this qualifier is somebody who... who uh, when I say it's a KYC tag, that's just a name. The, the, the software doesn't know the name. I mean, they could, it could be ABC, it could be CBS. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know, whatever, whatever the tag name is, when you te- when you create the token, you say honor this tag, and you have a, a, the full logic set. So you have parentheses and or not. So you could say KYC and accredited and not uh, you know DEA restricted or something like that. I mean, you can kind of do different tags, yeah. uh, and you can actually modify them in the future. So um, so one thing that happens on, with when you sell to accredited, there's kind of this year expiration, and then they can sell to other people, right? Yeah. So um, big advantage for people who are rich. Um, <laughs> maybe not great for fairness, but uh, that's kind of how it works now. But then uh, the, the issuer could actually uh, maybe take the accredited tag off and still, you know, they still want to know who it is and things for, for uh, you know, KYC would still exist, but they could take the accredited off and it could start moving to just KYC addresses. Yeah, I'm sort of picturing what would be the dispute resolution process if I was to get, say, a fraudulent medical degree and upload that and say that I'm a doctor. And how do you sort of prevent those things from being legitimate, I guess, as issued assets on the blockchain? Yes. Yeah, so, so a um, couple things. One, there's no such thing as a legitimate asset, right? For, as far as the technology is concerned, the technology is just saying, hey, you have this name and you have this quantity. Yeah. Uh, it's really the SEC saying, uh, well, SEC or CFTC, There's uh, they kind of regulate it so you're not um, selling something uh, that doesn't really represent what it it is. And I think that's where the SEC steps in, right? So if you say, Hey, and, and this has been used as an example before, right? I create the Brooklyn Bridge asset, right? That isn't necessarily the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah. Uh, right, if I go sell that, and that was really a problem with like railroad certificates and stuff way back in the you know in the early days and yeah. and things like that. But you know, fraudulent stuff. So the SEC does that. There's also we you know we also have the FTC and you know fraud is fraud. And so there's other rules that kind of cover this. But um, as far as uh, proving that the that the asset is what it says it is, uh, that's another place that we shine over the ERC-20 token. And that is when you issue something, you can put documents online, provably immutable. Uh, they go on IPFS and the IPFS hash goes on chain. And both of those are kind of tamper, tamper proof because uh, if you change the, the file on IPFS, the hash isn't the same. So yeah. it's not the chain is saying it was or what you signed to, to when you created the token. So th- those two, uh, IPFS and, and Ravencoin work really, really real, well together and we're extending that. So uh, uh, as soon as we get out of testnet on this next thing, uh, every uh, every transaction can actually include an IPFS hash. So you could have a file or, or a 4K movie or, or something with every transaction that goes on IPFS. Um, but what we, we can do that the ERC-20 can't is that this IPFS hash uh, this IPFS file, it can be the document. I mean, it, you say Brooklyn Bridge, it literally could be the document signed by the owners of the Brooklyn Bridge saying we are tokenizing this and signed by all the rep- representative party and agreed to by the, you know, the SEC issued and all that. So you could actually do it and actually kind of prove all of that, uh, you know, when, if you really had it. Um, cool. So, cool. Yeah. Yeah. The next thing I want to dive into was the Ravencoin itself and the utility. So you guys have... Um, had that proof of work blockchain you've got a great community and everyone's mining yeah. um yeah. you don't talk about maybe the asic resistance as well with the mining and how the raven coin itself ties into it all sure so one of the original things in, in our white paper is we wanted to stay asic resistant that isn't because we don't like machines that are custom built it's it tends to centralization so if you had a lot of uh, machines that were custom built to that and they tended to go to one place or one data farm or one thing 
you might have three or four of those that, that had, you know, maybe 60, 70, 80% of the horsepower, you know, hash power. Yeah. And, and, and then you have three entities that you basically need to go shut down to basically, you uh, or to, to stop transactions and things like that. So we want it to be very resistant uh, to uh, tampering by, by nation states or by individuals or whatever. So um, that was kind of an, in our original white paper. Uh, because of that, uh, we have we do have an ASIC now. Uh, it was found. Uh, it may have been. We don't know how long it's been out there. Uh, it's now we've seen it for sale, and, and we know a few individuals that have it, yeah. measured it. Uh, some of the sit for sale sites have it at two hundred mega hash, two hundred eighty mega hashes. It looks like it's at about uh, maybe two hundred fifty. So they kind of overpromise a little bit, but uh, not that that matters. Uh, what matters is uh, that we said no ASICs. Uh, and so we're making some changes. Uh, we've made the changes. They're actually, we released them uh, yesterday. And, and it's an algorithm change that'll, that'll take place on, on October 1st. Um, and it basically just changes it. So the ASICs that exist are basically paperweights or can be used on, on for another coin. Yeah. Uh, the, the ASICs in this particular case uh, are not at all a threat to the network because they're only about 30% more efficient than running a GPU rig. They're a little cheaper, about yeah. uh, one-sixth the cost to buy, yeah. but about 30% cheaper. So they're really no threat. Um, so this really came down to a little bit like, are we going to keep our promise of ASIC resistance yeah. and not as much, oh, crap, an ASIC that, you know, that's dominating or a thousand times faster. It, it isn't that this time. Yeah. Um, I think Monero yeah. had um, that promise as well, and they found that their hash rate yeah. dropped by like 60 or 70% when they forked out assets. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so we've actually we've been doing that. We've been following Monero's algorithm. We we looked at uh, uh, CNV four, which is Kryptonite version four. Uh, we looked at using that, uh, which would which would uh, probably prevent ASICs for a longer period of time. Uh, in this short time frame that we have now, uh, we have to uh, we we would have to bring that algorithm into our mobile wallet, which is a pure. Uh, you know, SPV wallet, talk to the chain, doesn't use APIs and things like that. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, to get that in there would just was, was a little more difficult. So this is a pretty quick and easy change. The miners, uh, we have CC miner and T-Rex miner already on board. Uh, a bunch of the pools have already switched over. So it's it's moving pretty quick and, and you know, we still have a month or so. Yeah. And do you want to describe some of the utilities of the Raven coin itself? Yeah, so uh, I mean, Ravencoin, the the cryptocurrency, right, uh, has uh, a very very clean uh, issuance uh, or launch, uh, which means that uh, we you know we have a letter saying uh, it is not a security, which is required by Bitrix and Binance and those guys. So there's a pretty good chance, uh, no guarantees, but pretty good chance that we'll be on Binance US because we don't fall into that legal gray area. We're we're very very clean on that part. We didn't sell any to anybody. We didn't take anything and sell it or even use some of them set aside for development or even set aside some for marketing. So we have really no marketing budget. So I appreciate you bringing me on here. <laughs> this yeah. helps. Yeah. Um, and and uh, so, so, so we have the coin, right? It has a value. It's uh, it's in top, top 50 uh, right now. So I think 40th or something like that. Um, so yeah, so that exists. And then if you just want to create your own token and you're not worried about the security stuff that I just scared everybody with, right? With the, uh, if you want, if, if you just want it to be, uh, you know, an allowance coin or, or to represent, uh, you know, a prepaid gift card or a cup of lemonade or, or an hour of your time or, or thing, things like that, uh, you can just go create those tokens, uh, you know, cost 500 graven, you create a token, you say how many you want, one to 21 billion, you decide how divisible, either non-divisible, meaning you have to send them at least one you know, whole ones at a time, or divisible to eight decimal places like Bitcoin. You decide all those parameters. Yeah. Uh, you also can attach a file to that to say what it represents. And, and uh, this was sort of possible on, on like Counterparty, for example, except they had to do just bitly shortened links which pointed to a website which says what it was. Well, those websites are almost all gone, yeah. right? So now you just have a bitly shortly link, you know, bitly shortened link, and you don't know what even the token was for. Yeah. Uh, and so we don't have that problem because of this connection with IPFS. Uh, so that's kind of been really interesting and people putting all kinds of interesting things. Uh, if you go to uh, ravencoin asset-explorer.com you can see all the assets that have been created uh and you can see all the ipfs hashes that have been attached to it it's kind of fun yeah cool so a lot of projects have been facing that issue of funding um you know ongoing development and we know that someone like um you know decred or zcash kind of puts some to the side so what's it been like yep. for you guys and what, how is that sustainable longer term 
Yeah. So, so one one really nice thing is that uh, is that uh, Medici Ventures, uh, which is a VC firm that owns about t- portions of about twenty one, twenty two companies, uh, and is in the blockchain space, et cetera. They uh, they, they they allow uh, some of the developers to work on this project. Um, so um, that's been super helpful. Um, yeah, yeah. So we have you know a, a small team, but a team that that that's awesome. Uh, I think uh, that. that that works on this and uh, you know, kind of shepherds it a little and, bit. And going forward, is the hope like for the roadmap that there's more people coming on board, more I mean, businesses in the real world that are going to see oh. value in this, and that's the sort of thing that raises the you know all, all ships we, on Ravencoin. We, we would love to have that. I mean, more contributors. Uh, we we already have a lot of. Uh, technical contributors. We have a lot of people writing the second tier uh, tools, uh, other sites, other wallets, uh, you know, things like that. So that's happened organically. Um, we do have a lot of people contributing. Uh, it also, all of our Discord and Telegrams, they're not run by us. Um, but we're, we're, I think we're, some of us are administrators in there, but we don't actually admit it. The, the, some volunteer uh, folks, so Jeroz and Bianca and L, things like that, that are, are doing moderation and helping and answering questions, and that's been amazing. Um, and then, and then we have some other technical folks that have been adding to the project uh, and and contributing code and pull requests and things like that. So fantastic. So, what else yeah. is on the roadmap, or what does the future look like for you? Is there anything we haven't discussed today you think is important? Uh, so yeah. So stuff. There's a lot of stuff on testnet that's ready to launch. So messaging and memos. Uh, those are two biggies. Uh, memos. Messaging is the ability for the person who issued the token to communicate to their token holders. And they do that by basically uh, putting something in IPFS, but sending a token that only they own back to themselves. And that's a signal for the clients. And we're still working on the clients, uh, the clients to just show that message. And so only the token issuer can like, you know, say, hey, you know, we want to take a vote or, you know, do we want to whatever, whatever they want, uh, whatever messaging. Um, And then uh, memos uh, is the ability to send to put an IPFS hash for every transaction. So if you you can use it for anything, you could use it to record the basis, uh, your you know cost basis. You could use it for what you purchased. You could use it for all kinds of things. And we have actually some really interesting projects that I can't reveal yet yeah. that that are looking to use that. Uh, so really interesting stuff there. But it has to come online first before we can yeah. you know, introduce it. Uh, and then you know restricted assets and tags. They're, they'll activate at the same time. Uh, and then uh, dividends. So dividends or re- rewards is probably a safer word to use um, just because dividends has a kind of financial implication term. Yeah. Uh, but basically it's the ability, let's say you do create a, a valid, uh, you know, a, a properly issued STO and it's a company and it grows and you basically have promised in your offering documents that you're going to pay uh, profits back. Well, you could basically just send those profits back to in via Raven to the address holders of that token. And so you can do that now with the script. Uh, you, you don't really need uh, this button. Uh, but if we add it with a one button, you could just say, I want to take this $10,000 and send it to however many holders, prorate it, and it will just do all the work for you. And I chop it up, make the transactions, make them all fit in a block and send it out. Yeah. Um, so that is written and that'll, that, that's in a pull request. So it's sort of like pull request, get it in development, test it before we you know, put it on test net and make sure it works. Um, yeah, I guess yeah. final question would be about the whole space. So Bitcoin's dominance has sort of increased lately. It's been really tough for yep. altcoins. Are you yep. of the mind that there's going to be you know a few dozen of the best projects survive longer term and a lot of these coins need to get washed out or how do you see the whole space? Nope, not me. Uh, so I think there's going to be uh, thousands, tens of thousands more. I feel like it's, um, I really do. Okay. Uh, so the th- what changed is value now moves like email. And so as long as you have sort of uh, you know, some way to trade it for the other value, um, there's there's no reason that you can't use these for like little projects or things that you earn tokens, uh, you know, at a, at a fair or, you know, for working for somebody else that have small value that you can trade around. I just think there's going to be tons of them. And then, and then also the whole token tokenized thing where all these, all kinds of things get tokenized. Um, that has a connection to the real world, which we still need to work out. Materium's working on that. Um, and then legal documents and things like that need to kind of make that and, uh, you know, work a little bit better. But I think there's going to be tons. Um, I think I'm a huge fan of Bitcoin. I don't want to, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, but I'm definitely not in the, 
Bitcoin's going to, you know, one winner takes all or even like top 10 win or whatever. I think it's uh, a lot of them are here to stay. Uh, the junk ones will they'll fade out right to hopefully to their to their value of you know potentially as they, they may fade to zero if they don't have a good use case but i think there's going to be more use cases more tokens more more things moving around yeah interesting that's great to hear so thanks so much for joining us today man. i really enjoyed that and i hope everyone has at home the rundown ravencoin and we'll uh, have to catch up again in the future all right thanks for having me this has been uh it's been awesome appreciate it no worries man thanks guys